Hi there, welcome to this week's takeaway. I am going to cook for you another one of my Chinese takeaways that I really enjoy, which is uh, chicken and cashew nuts. Or if you are doing the veggie version, broccoli and cashew nuts, which is also very, very delicious. I uh, recommend trying that. So to make this takeaway, you can use a wok. But if you don't have a wok, then it works out really well just in an ordinary frying pan. I think I'm going to use the wok though. Uh, just to keep Neil happy because I like to see things flying about in a walk. Okay, so to get this started, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my rice on. Um, so as per last time, I'm going to do this first, get myself a cup because I'm doing it for two people. If you're doing it for four, then do two cups. And the my rice is one cup for two people. And then whatever you put in and rice, you put double the amount of water in. So one, two. Then the cushion assistant is going to get me some more water to put in you later on. Thank you. Okay, and we'll put that on and leave that to boil. As soon as we get it boiling, we'll set a five minute timer. And switch it off after five minutes. So that we can go just now. Okay, so we've done some of the work. Uh, starting off but what we're going to do first off is we're going to make the sauce to make the sauce what you need to do is take some soy sauce and put in three tablespoons of soy, soy sauce Just on that one. now if you've been smart what you have done is done the sugar first because then you'd have a dry spoon for your sugar but it uh, was not smart so i have to use two spoons which is more washing up for meal. Oh well. So three tablespoons soy sauce, one tablespoon of oyster sauce. If you like your Chinese takeaway very, very saucy, then I would put double the amount of sauce in. Um, so that would be six uh, soy sauce and two um, oyster sauce. You then want to add in water. So three tablespoons of water. Three, and then in another teaspoon add in the sugar you don't need to put sugar in I don't normally put sugar in because it's actually I find it quite sweet but um, for this recipe I'm going to do that mix that up and leave that to the side later next what you want to do is prepare all your vegetables and your cashew nuts. So if you measure out your cashew nuts, get all your vegetables that's on the list and make sure you cut them all. Um, I had an able assistant cut these for me. Thank you Neil. Um, and we'll use them later. And then you want to take your chicken, pat it dry so it feels dry to the touch and um, start off preparing that. So to prepare that what we're going to do is we're going to put two tablespoons of corn flour in a bowl the tablespoons come out quite small so this is just going to coat the chicken so have a, just a little look at how much chicken you've got and how much corn flour if you have too little then it's okay you can actually um, just add a little bit more in in a little while. Okay, so what we do is get our chicken prepared. To do that, cut it into cubes. Take a cube, roll it in the corn flour so it stops looking pink and starts looking nice and white. Put it on a plate. And then the next one. And just keep going until you get all your chicken covered in corn flour. Try not pick up any big clumps. If you're starting to get clumps in your flour, your chicken's not dry enough. So uh, just get another bit of kitchen towel and dry that off. It's going to need one of these fast forwards. Yeah. 
get in there. So I've used one chicken breast per person, but that usually gives me extra to eat the next day. If you've got chicken and broccoli in your recipe, then you can actually put both of them. Both taste quite nice. And that's everything ready to go. So I'm just going to wash my hands quickly just because I've been using chicken. Okay, so now we're ready to start stir frying all our ingredients together. This is quite a quick recipe, but that's why it's good to get everything prepared beforehand. What you want to do is have a one side your ingredients are going to go in and all the side stuff that's cooked um, because for the first part we'll be cooking stuff and then leaving it to rest and then putting it back into the recipe. So, start from a wok and I'm going to add some plain oil in, some fire oil or something like that. just let the oil start to heat. So this first part is really, really quick and that is toasting the um, cashew nuts. Okay, so just let your oil warm up and just put one in just to wait for it to hear when it starts sizzling. The important thing is when you're doing the cashew nuts, you need to keep them moving them around and then get them out in the space of about a minute to a minute and a half. If you do any longer than that, they start to burn and it won't taste quite as nice in your recipe. Okay, so that's the oil starting to smoke and starting to sizzle. I'm just going to turn it down so it doesn't fill my kitchen through of smoke. And just gently put my cashew nuts in. And what I want to do is keep moving them about so they get nice covered in oil. Now it gets nicely flavoured with cashew nuts. Now I'm waiting for them to go from white to go into a nice uh, brown. So that's the rice starting to cook, so I'm just going to put a five minute timer on. No, no, because I'm just doing that wrong. Okay, when that beeps, I'll know if I take my rice off. So there you go, it's starting to, starting to go, it's kind of starting to brown quite a bit. That was quite quick, so you want to get that out and use, just try and drain the oil off while you're taking it out because you want to keep that lovely taste in the oil for putting into your chicken batter. Okay. So that's my oil ready now for my chicken. Okay, next what you want to do is take your chicken and lay it out in the oil. very careful putting it in. The oil starts to smoke, just move it off the heat. Okay, and just leave that for a few seconds before you start moving it around. It starts to smoke, just going to take it off the heat for a little bit. And once it's once you can start to see just round the sides of the chicken, you'll, you'll see that the flour just starts to start looking a bit brown. That's when you can start turning it over. So to turn it over, get your spoon that you've already used. Just to gently turn them over. It's actually a bit healthy. 
And this is just sealing the chicken and the flour so that when you start tossing it around in the pan, it doesn't lose all its flour. You end up with just big globs of flour at the bottom of the pan rather than on the chicken. Leave that for a seconds. You can have a look underneath here to see the flour starting to look like it's caking the chicken. Okay, so if you've got quite squarey bits, there might be other parts you want to just seal. So if you've still got bits that look kind of white and floury and pink, then just put the chicken onto those bits as well. I don't know if you can actually see in the pan, to be honest. Can you see the pan, Neil? No. <laughs> oh well. It kind of starting to look like that. Can you see the pan there? Yeah, so you can see I've still got some bits that look a bit pink and chicky with white flower bits on them, so I'll get onto those sides as well. And it's good to remember where you started when you put the chicken bits in, um, so that you can know which bits have been cooking longer than the other parts. And then just keep turning the chicken in the same direction as you put them in in the first place. We get a bit more of an even, even cook. One more side to go. That's all nice to feel. So what I'm going to do now is toss it around for a few minutes so it starts to cook through. The chicken takes about 10 minutes to cook, 10 to 15 minutes to cook through, but you will be also cooking it again in the sauce in a little while, but you want to at least give it a good 5 minutes at this point. If the pan starts getting too dry, just add a little bit more oil into it. So that's all nicely sealed off and battered. So that's my first batch. That's my five minute timer for my rice. So I'm just going to switch off the water and that'll now just cook. I don't need to worry about it sticking to the bottom of the pan. The pan has got a bit dry, so I'm just going to put a little bit more oil into that. Just put it the side. Tip it around so it warms up. So you really want to make sure you cook your chicken through thoroughly and at the end I'll show you how to check if your chicken is cooked. Okay, got that leave out in the pan. That's my finish for that dish. Okay, so that's my finish for the raw chicken now. So once again just leave it to so that'll go brown underneath, so you'll be able to see underneath the chicken, you'll be able to see the just around the edges, you can see the flour changing colour. It should be going sort of yellowy brown colour. So 
I should have some music going or something. Not quite right there. Big is chicken bits the longer you're gonna have to leave them to cook for. But the ceiling bit should be the same, which is you're just at this point you're just trying to get the flour to stay on the chicken and give a nice sort of gentle bat around the sides. So I'm just going to turn these over onto the other side. The second side. Right, eight sided cube. Six sided cube, my gosh. Right. Okay, so just cooking the next side. Good news is this should be nice and quick because all the vegetables are already cooked, already uh, cut. So this is kind of the longest part of the whole thing is sealing your chicken. Everything else goes really, really quickly. Off. So I'm just going to carry on doing this for hopefully you come back when it's all done. So that's all nicely sealed, and I can start tossing this bit of chicken bit as well. Once again, toss this batch around for about five minutes. And keep going until you've got all your chicken cooked. It starts to smoke, take it off the heat. If it gets too dry, just add a little bit more oil. Okay, so now we've got our chicken done. 
and a cashew. So next we want to do is move on to our vegetables. So we're going to add a little bit more oil in. Careful uh, doing this so that it doesn't splash up in you. Or splash up in you. Again, just roll it all the way around. So that you get that there. It gets a bit warm right. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put in the uh, vegetables and we're going to put it in a particular order. So we're going to start off with our ordinary, ridiculously sized onion. So we put that in and we're going to add in the red chilli. Now after you cut red chilli or cut red chilli, you just want to wash your hands in cold water so that you don't end up touching your eye and making your eye burn or anything else. Um, and add in the garlic. Okay, so we're just going to keep moving that around for a couple of minutes. Okay, and then give it a minute. You add in your peppers. Red pepper, we're using more than one colour. Add both of them in and then keep that spinning around. The onion should start to look like it's glossy and so should the peppers um, once they're cooking and depending on how you like your peppers if you like them to be uh, nice and crunchy then you can cook them for a bit long a bit less time if you don't like them crunchy then keep going till they're nice and soft okay the last vegetable you're going to put in is your spring onions that's because you don't want to go all kind of slimy. Right, just picking this up for a couple minutes. So you can see it's starting to go glossy looking. And the onion's starting to look a bit see-through. If you're using the broccoli, then you have to decide how crunchy you want your broccoli to be. If you don't like crunchy broccoli at all, you can put it in the microwave for a little bit, for a couple of minutes before you put it in here. Or put the, the broccoli in quite early um, and cook that up so it gets longer and then it'll be nice and soft. If you like it crunchy, then put it in with the peppers. look nice and glossy. So the veg is starting to look pretty good. Okay, so next what we're going to do in, in is uh, the sauce. And it should go sticky with the sugar and the uh, oyster sauce in it. Should make it look nice sticky sauce in with the veg. Just move that around to heat it up. And then we're going to add back in our chicken and our cashew nuts and our spring onions. Just try and get it go hot. It should start to have a bit of smoke. And she see it's starting to go thick. Okay, you'll be able to smell it as well. That's having quite a sweet smell coming off of the soy sauce and the sugar. Okay, so you can see when you're moving that around, it's not so runny, it's kind of more. Goatee consistency. 
And that's when you know your sauce is ready for the rest of your ingredients. Okay, so we we'll add back in our cashew nuts and our chicken. And add in our green peppers. And then we turn the heat up just a little bit because my pan's gone quite cold for some reason. And then what you want to do is just keep turning, gently turning everything together. And what you're really looking for is for everything to get coated in the sauce, so everything should look really, really glossy and kind of wet looking. And the important part will be to check that chicken is actually cooked. If the sauce starts getting too thick, then you can add a little bit more water into it, but just a teeny little bit, a teaspoon, because um, you don't want it to go all mushy. Starts to look pretty good. We turn the heat down again. Look forward to this my plum crackers, I have to say. Okay, and an important bit that you need to do is you need to check that your chicken is cooked. That's the part that's very, very important. And to do that, what you do is you take a part out, put it on your chopping board, just let it cool for a little bit before you touch it. Because bear in mind it's got a sticky sauce on it, sticky sugary sauce on it, so if you touch it, it's really going to burn. Cut it in half and then just check to make sure that it's white all the way through and not pink. If it's still looking a little bit pink, which this one is, then keep cooking for a wee bit longer. And that, once your chicken is not pink and is white all the way through, that is your chicken and cashew nuts. And my rice is also perfectly made. That's chicken and cashew nuts.